Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Journal, a show unlike any other, where you get to see amazing stories carefully crafted by our student filmmakers here at Centennial College. Now's the time to get excited. That is correct, my friend. Today, we venture into the homes of four creative individuals as they try to make good use of their time during the pandemic. From starting a YouTube channel to making delicious crepes, we may be under lockdown, but that's not holding us back. We also touch base with a friend of ours who is into the art of kendama, a Japanese skill toy, Plus, we made an up-and-coming artist reinventing traditional sailor tattoos. And last but not the least, our feature documentary about mental health and wellness practices. This is The Journal. Welcome back to The Journal, a show dedicated to creativity and produced by second year broadcasting students right here at Centennial College, bringing wonderful stories to you in just about 30 minutes. My name is Aiden. And my name is Parth. Our second year colleagues here at Story Arts Center campus made all the short documentaries featured here in The Journal. And with the pandemic still in place, they are finding new ways to shoot their projects. In saying that, aren't we just grateful to be here right now? I mean, being at home all the time has been so hard. I don't know for how, like, how many months? I totally get you, Parth. However, with this quarantine going on, a lot of people seem to be adapting well and have come up with new, creative ways to spend their time. In our first story, our producer Stephen Kumala shares his interesting experience starting up a YouTube channel for the first time. What's going on there, guys? Good boys. Come on, and we're back with another video. Over there. So I guess the incentive of making YouTube videos started back in, well, technically 2020. So basically, the premise of my YouTube video was I was trying to uh, take advantage of any resources that I have. So I'm doing vlogs occasionally. Fun stuff, fun challenges to make YouTube video. Once I did a TikTok dance with my sister, that was a lot of fun. I failed miserably in that video. This is my first, not really my first, this is the YouTube video that was pretty much fan favorite. Although I don't particularly know that I do have a fan base, but like definitely not, no. Got that. Kanan kiri. Kanan kiri. Kanan kiri. Kanan kiri. Ta, ta. Ta, ta. Crazy. Crazy. Oh, see you talk. Oh. I'm not going to I like my gestures. I like it. I like it. Like I was like very hyperactive. Like I felt I didn't feel forced. After we were done filming this, I thought that this is gonna be something good. Bam, bam, bam. I remember I did some research. I did a lot of research of uh, how to make a YouTube intro in, in After Effects because that's where I made it. And I remember like I wanted to make something anti-mainstream that is not mainstream, but then again it can it it it, it describes my personality. My edit part pattern was just chaotic. Like I just wanted it to be as chaotically funny as possible. Yeah, like I'm using like crash zooms. Um, I'm scaling up and down and just you know cutting in between the scenes, jump cutting and putting a bunch of titles and just a bunch of memes and using a bunch of like weird. And... Eventually, I realized that the numbers weren't going up. Instead, the people that were watching went down video by video and I was having consistency problems as well. Running a YouTube channel is not easy. It's It requires a lot of consistency and uploading regularly. So in the end I got overwhelmed and I decided to shelf my YouTube channel away. I don't want to say I quit making YouTube videos. Who's gonna say that I won't go back to it if I want to in the future? But you know my YouTube journey still goes on in my filmmaking. A great documentary there by Stephen Kumala. 
Over 2 billion logged in users visit YouTube each month, and every day people watch over a billion hours of video. Speaking of YouTube channels, what would your intro look like if you had your own YouTube channel? I liked how Steven did it for his channel, but I've, it's kind of hard to imagine what kind of style and narrative you'd choose. Uh, well, I'm not much of a content creator, Eden. I don't think I would fare well being speaking in front of the camera. But we're on camera right now, you're doing great. Yeah, but you know, we got people and the comment section, you know? You're so photogenic though. Uh, no, I don't think so. Anyway, don't forget, later on we have some great stories including the Japanese toy Kandama, a tattoo artist, and some great advice to lift your stress during COVID. But first, let's take a detour into the kitchen. This one is smoking hot and I mean it. Now we check in with our friend Dimitri and his delicious Crips recipe to brighten up your quarantine. Hi, my name is Dimitri and today I'm going to speak a little about how to survive during a pandemic and don't get crazy, especially if you're an artist. And it seems like many people find this situation really hard to go through. However, we're going to show you how can you enjoy the each step of anything you do. Let's say you're going to cook something and you can enjoy every step and think about how important that every small step is. So in order to relax and forget about all the problems that we're facing nowadays, we can more focus on the things that really matters, that are happening right now. And even small things can make a huge difference. So we're gonna make some creeps together. The knowledge of cooking will always come in handy during your life. Especially today, during these tough pandemic times, cooking brightens up my day and turns the cooking process into a creative pastime. Plus, it saves tons of money. During the quarantine, I have learned how to make every small step meaningful. As a designer and artist, I am pretty sure that the success of any truly delicious recipe is mostly depends on those small details. I would like to advise everyone to reconsider their attitude to cooking, because you can enjoy and benefit from this wonderful process. It's great therapy and just another useful skill that can transform any human being into an artist and creator. And there is something magical in the process of cooking, and it's very important to love what you're doing. So here's the final stage where you have to make your decision whether it's gonna be salty or sweet or sour, whatever. You can make your own like inventions, create new recipes. You can combine it with literally everything. So right now I'm gonna put some uh, chicken with mushrooms and cheese, and then maybe add some sour cream. And for the sweet ones, I have condensed milk and Nutella, maybe with some bananas. I truly believe that one of the main ideas for each artist is to enjoy every moment of creation. I like this dish because it came from Ukraine, it reminds me of my childhood, but also it helps me to relax and just enjoy the, all the different tastes that I mix. It can be sweet again, it can be salty or sour. You can mix and experiment all the different flavors that you can just imagine. Oh, that crepe looked tasty. I might need to start cooking again. By the way, Dimitri made cooking sound so relaxing, didn't he? Uh, what are you doing? Oh no, just, I was just looking at some information here. Do you know, according to the National Center for Biotechnology Information, cooking improves psychological well-being. Really? Yeah. Hmm. In the meantime, back to the main course, if you will, our next story features a kendama, a traditional Japanese toy that made its way here and captured the hearts of many people with its innovative ways to play. It emerged in Japan during the Edo period. We tune in with Travoy and Joshua Julian with his story, Kendama-rama. My name is Julian. I am second year at Ryerson University for new media, and yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks for thanks for uh, you know allowing me to interview you. 
Um, yeah, so Kandama, like, what is that? It, so, it's like, it seems like a, it's a toy, but yeah, can you so, expand on that? Yeah, so I have one here, and there's one like on my shelf on the top. I like, can't oh. see it, but it's there. Um, so basically, this is a Japanese skill toy. Um, I'm not too sure about its history because it's kind of like a web of stuff, but um, from what I know, this this is Japanese. It's basically a cup and ball. There's three cups one, two, and three, and then a spike with a ball with a hole, and yeah, it goes in. And um, I didn't really um, know about it until I was like early high school, probably like my first year in high school. And the way it kind of circulated from Asia all the way to North America was uh, a bunch of Americans came to discover it somehow. I'm not completely sure, but it kind of spread within that community. And then from there, it kind of just spread around North America. And then now all of us like kids up here are just playing Kendama. When people started, it was really just cups. And then they realized like, hey, like these little ridges down here can be used to balance the ball and you can go all the way around. The same thing here. It's like, oh, like this thing has a function too. If you bring the ball here, you can actually stop it there. And same way, like depending on which way you turn the Ken. And some people are like crazy enough to balance the ball on the spike where it's like this or the other way around. And having a string, people start getting creative with a string because they were like, hey, this kind of looks like a yo-yo. So they started implementing a lot of like yo-yo tricks onto Kendama. To me, it's really just, well, a hobby for one and another way to just like express myself. Probably like the only thing that COVID took away from all of us was that we can't see each other anymore and we can't like, you know, learn from each other anymore. Um, part of like, probably like one of the biggest things about art in general is just like, when you can spend time with people who are like way better than you and like teach you and like, I feel like that adds on a lot to your learning experience, like whatever it is. So yeah, like I think like now, like whether it's Kendama, like even with like other stuff like dance and art and like school, mm -hmm. like I feel like things are starting to slow down cause I don't, we don't have that interaction anymore. And so our learning experience is kind of like declining in a way. We used to have monthly meetups together where it's just like 20 of us like in a park or something playing Kendama. And like, we just like, you know, we just have fun, talk about life. Oh my God, that was so complicated for just a simple wooden toy. I mean, it was just like a yo-yo. I gotta say, I am really impressed. Although Kendama falls under the category of a toy, it's not just a toy. We found out that it's also a great stress reliever. On top of that, there's a whole community dedicated to players just like Joshua. Really? Wow, I mean, you had a solid point there, Aiden. Quarantine does bring out a creative side in people. But don't go anywhere yet, because our next story showcases an artist in the style of traditional sailor tattoos. In 1995, critic Michael Kimmelman wrote that tattoos were important to the art of world because of their outsider status, even comparing them to the self-taught art and art of the insane. Things have changed a lot since then, so let's dive in and see how Ian Bonner is making his mark. Yeah, so my name is Ian Bonner. Uh, pretty much in a nutshell, I like to paint. I like to paint American traditional flash. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with American traditional flash, it's pretty much a tattoo style of art. Um, style entails kind of bold designs. Pretty much the best way I can describe it is those old school kind of sailor tattoos that your grandfather would have over on his arms and stuff. Bold designs, stuff that you'd be able to recognize from down the street. You know, clean, pretty limited color selection. Old school sailor designs, pretty much. That's what I love to paint. You know, it wasn't really until June or July of 2020 when I started getting into American traditional flash. Uh, I got a tattoo from a guy, Brandon Ng, shameless shout out, by the way. Brandon Ng, Instagram handle, moved slow back at when he was at TCB in Toronto. Uh, it wasn't really until then I started asking him questions about the style, you know, what kind of materials and mediums do you use and stuff, right? Uh, yeah, so that kind of got me interested in the whole style. It's always been like a, a general interest of mine. It just never kind of came to fruition until midway through last year where I started taking it seriously. And mm -hmm. That dream of becoming a tattoo artist kind of rose, right? Pandemic is, has placed a significant amount of stress on everyone, right? And I do think some more than others. And to be honest with you, I do think I'm quite lucky in the sense where I wasn't 
affected greatly. So I, I, first off, I don't own a business. So like that is an additional stress placed on me. Uh, I have a lot of sympathy for business owners at this moment, like small independent business owners, just with lockdowns, it's making conducting business that much harder, right? We've seen numerous businesses fold. I'm extremely lucky in the sense where, where I live, I can take care of my bills. And if anything, I do think this pandemic has, has gifted me, has allotted me this tremendous amount of time to kind of hone in on the skill, right? No, if if it wasn't for this time off, I I don't know if I'd be where I am today in the sense where I have all this time where I could spend on my drawing. A vast amount of tattoos have surfaced over recent years from spirit animals to portraits depicting skulls or new school graffiti. New artists conceived every waking moment. I have been meaning to get myself a tattoo someday. Sorry to burst your bubble, Parth. Unfortunately, all tattoo shops are still closed under the lockdown. However, improving your sketching skills during the lockdown is a great opportunity to increase the quality of tattoos. You know what, Parth? I think this next story will be the one for you. In our final documentary, we meet Ashley and Keanu, who each share some of their wellness routines. When I wake up in the morning, I get out of bed and wash my face, kind of rejuvenate the skin, make sure you're feeling awake because that's a really important part of the morning. So when I meditate, I breathe and I focus on letting go and bringing in the good energy. And then I like to focus on who I need to be versus who I am and who I would like to be. Some things I feel after the meditation are relief and uh, joy, happiness, often gratitude. I like to count all my blessings because every day is not guaranteed. So. Every day when I have the opportunity to wake up and release the bad feelings or focus on the good feelings, it's one step closer to the person I am able to be. Usually I like to wake up early now. I was a little bit bad with that, but now I've kind of got my schedule going where I, I like to wake up at a good time. Um, as soon as I wake up, first thing I do is I drink, I chug about 500 mils of water. That's one thing I always have to do, just so I can get my body going and feeling hydrated again. Usually, depending on the morning, 15 minutes stretch, I'll go down to my basement, stretch down there. And then depending if I wanna do the workout right there and then, I'll go for a workout. Every time you do a workout, those endorphins are going, you're feeling good about yourself. And it puts you in a mindset that's very disciplined. Um, and if you continue to push those things that you don't want to do, it kind of rolls over into the rest of your day. And that's what I didn't want to do. So I knew if I wake up and do that thing I don't want to do, right thing, the first thing in the morning, then it sets me up for the entire day. So a little bit of my philosophy that keeps me going throughout my day-to-day -day life is thinking about something greater beyond myself. And what I mean by that is to find depth in your life. And not only do I mean finding depth in terms of who you are or who you need to be and who you want to be, your greater purpose, your life meaning, your life path, your journey, and finding out the best suitable way for you to reach out to other people and help them become the best suitable versions of themselves. So. For me to bring awareness to my own strengths is to help other people bring awareness to their own strength. Starting the day, because what I noticed is when I started the day looking at my phone, I would see something that someone else was doing during the pandemic and they were doing amazing. And I was like, why am I not doing amazing? Oh my God. This would be like at eight in the morning, I'd feel like, I'd feel like crap already. I'd already, I'd already put myself at the start of the day, right first thing in the morning, at a, at a fail, just a complete fail. And that, would, and that whole day would follow that way. So I knew the first thing to do was, okay, if I can put my phone away when I wake up, that's a start. And then from there, I started to realize, okay, maybe it's the little things I need to control here 
that will lead to the biggest thing, which is just controlling my day, which is myself. If I can control myself throughout the entire day, then I'll be, I'll be fantastic. And then from that, I was able to start eating healthier one meal at a time. You know, I would eliminate. Okay. If I can do 80%, I'm not even telling anybody, I wouldn't tell anyone, oh, eat healthy the entire day. I would just say, if you can eat 80% of the day healthy, go for it. That's perfect. And then you can have a little chips or whatever you want. And that was my mindset. I was like, okay, let me control those little habits that were bringing me down and causing me to be depressed, have anxiety, all that kind of stuff. And let's see how it goes. And I noticed a complete switch in my mood productivity, going out for walks, reading books, having conversations with my family, talking to them, controlling those little things were pretty much what got me out of that headspace and allowed me to have the most productive days during this pandemic. Wow, it's really amazing how SK and Keanu managed to stay fit and productive during the pandemic. I mean, I can't even leave my bed and make a sandwich. I know, man. It's inspiring that there are so many things we can still do under the lockdown restrictions. I hope watching the show has done exactly that for you. But please, don't forget to watch our other amazing episodes on this channel, all produced by broadcasting students right here at Centennial College's Story Arts Center. My name is Aiden. And my name is Parth. We'll see you next time, so stay fit.